Hello and welcome to my Celasta Crown of the Magister Warlock Class Guide. Levels 1 to 12. I'm your host, Mephro. So if this guide managed to help you out even a tiny little bit, please smash that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. Alright, let's go. So in this guide, we're going to be going over the most optimal way to build a warlock at the start of the game. So let's make a new character. Right, so there's literally only one race that comes to mind when I'm going to build a warlock, and that is the half elf. So the half elf gets six movement tiles. Second highest in the game next to the Savannah Elf, who has seven. So it's a lot of movement, allows you to line up your spells a lot more efficiently. And you've got ability score increase charisma plus two, increase two other scores by one point each. So charisma is your main stat, followed by constitution and then dexterity in that order. So having that charisma plus two helps you out quite a lot as a warlock since that is your main stat. Bonus skills, choose any two skills, are nice to have as well. Dark vision, see normally in dim light and in natural darkness, as if in dim light. So once again, in every single guide I've ever made, Darkness is real terror and Celasta. It literally is one of the most defining mechanics of the whole game. So it really, really messes you up if you have nothing to see in the dark because you will be missing everything because you have disadvantage on all your attacks and spells. Fate Ancestry, saving throw advantage against charm. So this cuts out the mind control crap, keeps you sane in the brain, so to speak. Immunity to magical sleep means you're not sleeping on a job. This is just icing on the cake of the really great package of the half elf. Then we've got languages, common, elvish, and one language of your choice. So this is kind of this flavor at this moment in time. There's not really that much use for language at the moment in Celasta. Let's go next. Okay, so Warlock class guide. I'm going to be picking Warlock. So Warlock class features, nothing really stands out here that I need to explain. So let's just go next and have a look at the other worldly patrons, which are the subclasses. Let's start with the tree. So the tree subclasses patron features are expanded spells. You can select from this list of additional spells when you learn a new spell. Entangle, Fog Cloud, Bark Skin, Spike Growth, Bestow Curse, Conjure Animal, Confusion, Phantasmal Killer, Contagion, Dominate Person. So this is quite a nice list of spells. They're not great. I mean, they're good for the early game. They're not amazing though. But for the early game, this would help a lot. But towards the mid to late game, this list isn't that great. They've got Piercing Branch. Starting at the first level, small piercing branches sprout from your skin. Whenever an enemy hits you with melee attack, they take 1d6 piercing damage. So the thing about this is, as a warlock, you do not really want to be hit. You don't want to be the tank of the group. So having a passive that only works when you get hit in melee range, it means you're doing something wrong. You're doing something horribly wrong if your warlock is in melee range or, you know, you get hit too many times in melee range. So having a passive that works on that is a big no-go for me. Let's have a look at Timekeeper. So Timekeeper's patron features also get expanded spells once again. You can select from this list of additional spells when you learn a new spell. Long Strider, Magic Missile, Blur, Calm Emotions, Haste, Slow, Greater Invisibility, Phantasmal Killer once again, Raise Dead and Dominant Person. This list is slightly stronger. The Magic Missile is very good in the early game. Your Blur is actually average as well. Haste and Slow are very strong, so it's Greater Invisibility. So these are all fairly decent spells. Very strong list actually for the early and mid late game. Next up, we've got Curse of Time. Starting at the first level, whenever you damage an opponent with a spell, they become afflicted with the Curse of Time. Who would have thought? Enemies under the Curse of Time take half your proficiency bonus, round it up, false damage at the start of their turn for the next minute. So this just adds to your already quite impressive damage as the Warlock. So this is actually very, very strong passive. So let's have a look at the Hive. So the Hive gets expanded spells once again. You can select from this list of additional spells when you learn a new spell. Detect Poison and Disease. Inflict Wounds, Acid Arrow, Calm Emotions, Lightning Bolt, Stinking Cloud, Giant Insect, Stone Skin, Cloud Kill, Insect Plague. Out of all those, I think the only ones that really stand out to me is Calm Emotions, Lightning Bow, Cloud Kill can be situationally useful. And nothing else here is good though. That's literally like, what, two or three of the spells and half time, they're very situational as well. Calm Emotions and Cloud Kill are very situational. Lightning Bow, you can use most of the time. It's kind of like a fireball, but slightly worse. So yeah, this spell list isn't that great either. Weakening Pheromones. Starting at first level each turn, the first creature you damage with a spell will have disadvantage on their next saving throw. This condition expires on its own after one minute. So fairly strong passive. I mean, it's kind of mid to strong just because it's very situational once again. Your warlock will be throwing out spells all the time. So this is kind of strong. It's kind of like icing on the cake. It's not like really standout-ish like the timekeeper's passive is doing the extra damage, but this will help out a lot during fights. It's just a shame that it's kind of paired up with some of the weakest spells I've ever seen in my life on this Warlock subclass. Let's have a look at the Fiend. So the Fiend, you can select from this list of additional spells when you learn a new spell. Burning Hands, Bane, Blindness, Scorching Ray, Fireball, Stinking Cloud, 
Fire Shield, Wall of Fire, Flame Strike, Contagion. So this spell list is actually very strong. I like most of the spells on here. I like Fireball. I like Scorching Ray. I like Blindness. I like, uh, what is it, Wall of Fire. And I think that's about it. And Contagions are right as well. So there's actually a fair amount of really decent spells there. About four to five really good spells there. So that's a great list. Over to Dark One's Blessing. Starting at first level, when you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to Charisma Modifier, plus your Warlock level minimum of one. So this is actually fairly strong. But the only problem is, once again, you don't really want your Warlock to be a tank. Don't get me wrong. The extra hit points is nice to have. But... Most of the time, you don't really need those extra hit points if you position correctly during battles. So this is kind of like up to you whether you think the tankiness is worth it. It means you're taking an extra couple of hits from arrows or spells, whatever. But most of the time, you don't really need this extra kind of hit points unless you're going some sort of melee warlock spec. So the class we're going to be picking for the warlock guide is the timekeeper. I feel like it's the strongest warlock subclass in the game at the moment. Let's go next. So backgrounds, just make sure you have everything covered by your other party members. Members. So depending what party composition you are using will affect which backgrounds you choose. I'll be going with the Cell Sword background for this guide just because you get medium armor, which makes you a bit more tanky as a caster class. And then on to personalities, just kind of pick what you want. You want to be good, evil, you want to be funny, sarcastic. It only affects how your character talks in game and the reactions to the conversations that you have in the game as well. Let's go next. Okay, so over to the ability score screen. So once again, you decide how you want to play. If you want to play standard rain, just kind of slam things in there, you know, go ahead. You want to start re-rolling the dice, you know, for really high stats, go ahead once again. You decide how you want to play. If you want to play that way, completely up to you. I myself, I normally play a point by. I find it gives me the most challenge. Starting with strength, we're going to bring that up to 10 so it's not in a minus. So strength is useful for jumping across to ledges, jumping over things, climbing up walls and stuff. During combat, you will notice it quite a lot if your strength is in a minus because you'll be falling down things and not be able to climb up walls to get to high advantage points to use your spells. So having strength at 10 or just not a minus is very good for caster classes. On to dexterity. So I'm going to bring this up to 13 for now because we've got bonus points on the side here. So with the 13 dexterity, or should I say the 14 dexterity eventually, our armor class will be a lot higher. So that means we'll be able to mitigate a lot more damage. It means there's a lot more misses on us from range attacks or melee attacks. If we happen to end up in melee. And on top of that, if we get attacks of opportunity with our melee weapons, it gives us a bit of finesse, shall I say, or ability to hit something just in case. We don't really do that much damage with melee anyway, but it's still a nice thing to have. Then we've got constitution. We're going to bring that up to 15. So this is like our life pool, pretty much, our hit points. How many hits? we can take before we go down constitution is nice it also affects our saving throws as well then intellect we're going to bring this up to 12 the reason we're bringing this up to 12 is because the warlock will most likely or normally will be replace the intellect class that you have in your team so you'll normally either have a wizard a warlock or a sorcerer you won't have all three most of the time unless you're doing some sort of crazy cast to play through with three wizards or three you know caster classes and a tank that's pretty cool but otherwise you'll normally only have one intellect class or one person that can handle the arcana kind of skill set so having the intellect around 12 means we're not going to be complete fail at that it means we can kind of dabble in it a tiny bit moving on to wisdom so wisdom we're going to leave that as our dump stat so to speak normally i do not like leaving wisdom below 10 or actually in a minor just because all the mind control effects you know fear and all that i am a half elf though i have a racial passive that will help a tiny bit against that and i also need all the stats i can get or the points i can get for our charisma to be at a respectable level so we're going over here to charisma our main stat we're going to pump that all the way up to 16 charisma affects our chance to hit with spells it also affects our dialogue options and also affects our damage in combat as well charisma is love charisma is life so over to the right hand side we're going to put one point into dex so it brings up to 14 so we get a bit more ac to play around with and one point into constitution so we have a bit more hit points as well and let's go next so class skills we're gonna put a point into arcana this is the reason why we took 12 intellect earlier so we've got a plus one already in there makes it a bit more useful for us because most of the time as i said earlier as well we will be replacing the other caster in the party so we'll either be paired up with maybe a cleric or druid but otherwise we probably won't have another sorcerer or wizard in our party with us unless you're doing a cast to run but yeah arcana is very useful it's useful for uh, identifying things useful for getting experience points on certain landmarks also used in conversation and also useful for enchanting it's useful for quite a lot of things then what history 
History, once again, it's an intellect kind of stats kind of thing. So that's the reason why we had our intellect around 12. So this helps out quite a lot as well with our lore and with our XP finds and also figuring out puzzles and different kind of options in the conversation. Down to languages. So between the languages and stuff, you normally just kind of pick what you don't really have. As I said earlier, the languages don't actually make that much difference in the game at this moment in time. The only one that stands out to me is Giant, which is used in the Lost Valley DLC, but there are ways of getting around that because they give you some options just in case, otherwise it locks you out of the whole quest line. No spoilers intended, just saying. But as I said, yeah, languages doesn't really matter that much, so just kind of pick what you don't really have and just go for it and go next. So instead of talking about every single spell like I did in my wizard Slaster class guide. I'll put the link in the description for you. I'm literally just going to go through them, give them all a rating out of five, and the ones that I've selected, as you can see here, I'll talk about them briefly. It just keeps the guide a bit more streamlined, a bit more snappy, so to speak. Starting with Chill Touch, one out of five. So this is actually exclusive to the Warlock. On the Sorcerer and the Wizard, I'll give Chill Touch four out of five because it's one of the best cantrips you can have. But on the Warlock, you are mostly going to be using Eldritch Blast. So you're not going to have any use for that at all. Dazzle, one out of five. Eldritch Blast, six out of five. So this is your bread and butter. You're gonna be using this every single combat, all the way from levels one to 12. I describe the Warlock as kind of like a spell ranger. I mean, the ranger does have spells, but the Warlock has more spells as utility. But he's mostly just kind of spamming this out, or she's mostly just kind of spamming out Eldritch Blast all during the combat so instead of using arrows and a bow you're using you know purple energy you know purple dark matter energy out your hands so yeah this is, that's kind of the difference between them so the warlock is very similar to a ranger i would say and this is actually your bread and butter so it's very strong does a lot of damage and you get a lot of kind of passives to add to it so you can kind of like upgrade this to give it like not back and other really crazy things like that they got poison spray i'll give this a one out of five shadow armor i'll give it a three out of five or four out of five it just kind of helps out in the early game but apart from that it's not really that useful later on then we've got shadow dagger i'll give this a two out of five once again, exclusive to the Warlock, if this was the Sorcerer or if it was the Wizard, I'll give this a 5 out of 5. Shadow Dagger is one of the best cantrips in the game as well, but compared to Eldritch Blast, it doesn't compare for a Warlock. Then what Sparkle, depending on the campaign you're playing, if you're playing the Lost Valley DLC, 3 out of 5 or 2 out of 5. If you're playing the main campaign, I'll give it a 4 out of 5 or a 5 out of 5, because Sparkle is actually pretty strong in the main campaign. True Strike, 0 out of 5. Charm Person, 0 out of 5. Comprehend Languages, 0 out of 5. Expeditious Retreat, 3 out of 5. Hellish Rebuke, 4 out of 5. Long Strider, 3 out of 5. Then we've got Magic Missile, kind of bread and butter. It's a 5 out of 5 spell. It just kind of allows you to down stuff. It can't miss. So it's kind of like the finisher, the execution spell. That's why I love having Magic Missiles on nearly every single cast I play at the beginning of the game. Because you can hit them behind walls, you hit behind anything you want. It can't miss. So if something's very low, you kind of use this as a finish him kind of spell. Most of the time at the beginning of the game. But later on, you'll get better spells to be able to do that. But yeah, for this, it's kind of like an early mid-game spell, which I use sometimes in late game as well. A staple, I would say. An absolute staple of the game. Over to Melediction, 5 out of 5. So this is pretty strong because when you put it on a target, every time you hit them with something like a spell, you do extra damage on that target. It kind of reminds me of another class. Um, I think it's called a Ranger. Yeah, the Ranger with Hunter's Mark. So instead of using arrows and hitting the target and doing extra bonus damage, using spells and hitting the target and doing extra bonus damage. So it's pretty much, essentially, it's like, kind of like a hunter's mark. And on top of that, it only costs a bonus action as well. So you don't take a main action to cast this out. So normally you put this on as a bonus action and then start blasting away with Eldritch Blast straight away. They've got Protect versus Evil and Good. I'll give this a 3 out of 5, depending on the campaign you're playing. And let's go next. Right, so character creation. Spend hours making characters. Go ahead, make them as beautiful as you can or try to with the options they've given you. But anyway, I've named it Warlock for the basis of this guy and it's finished. So up to level 2, so hit points, spells and Eldritch Invocations. Learn Eldritch Invocations to acquire new abilities or spells granted by your patron. Some invocations require a prerequisite to be trained. Okay, let's go next. So class Invocations. I'm going to quickly go through them all, give them a brief summary and a rating out of five starting repelling blast when you hit creature with eldritch blast you can push the creature up to two cells away from you in a straight line so this gives you a bit of breathing room also allows you to kite for longer as well if somebody's trying to chase you like an enemy 
and you just kind of get a bit of breathing room, run away a bit more. You can actually keep knocking them back, so they have to use more cells to get to you each time. On top of that, you can combo this with cliffs. So say, for example, you're on a high ledge, you can knock them off to do a bit more full damage on them, which is also great. And on top of that, you can combo this with entangles, spike growth traps, any sort of AoE that's been left on the ground, wall of fire, that kind of thing and you'll do a bit more damage. It's actually really strong, very strong passive, four out of five. And we've got Fiendish Vigor. You can cast false life on yourself at will as a first level spell without expending a spell slot or material components. So, I mean, if your positioning at the beginning of the game isn't that great, this can be quite good to keep you alive a bit longer. False life gives you HP. It's an okay spell, but I probably would take this and then replace it later. If it was me, I wouldn't keep this throughout the game because it's going to kind of fall off pretty damn hard. I'll give this a 2 out of 5 or 3 out of 5. Then we've got Beguiling Influence. You gain proficiency in deception and persuasion skills. Gain expertise instead if you are already proficient. So, I mean, I'm not that fussed about conversation uh, skills at all in the, inside the game. Deception and persuasion skills, you're already going to have that pretty high because you are Warlock. Charisma is your main stat, so it's going to be fairly high already. There's not much point in taking this. I'll give this a 0 out of 5. Devil's Sight. You have blind sight up to 16 cells, allowing you to perceive enemies even through invisibility and magical darkness. So, this is actually fairly strong. You can combo it with quite a few things. You can get people out of invisibility as well using this you can be able to target them which is pretty strong and also there's a spell called darkness you can place it on an enemy so they can't see you or they have to move out of it to be able to attack you and you can see inside that and still attack them whereas normally you wouldn't be able to so yeah devil sight's actually pretty strong i'll give it a three probably a four out of five three out of five then on to Eyes of the Rune Keeper. You understand all languages and writings. I'll give this a 0 out of 5. Languages in this game isn't very useful. It's kind of a bit of flavor. There's not really that many that are actually useful apart from giant language at this moment in time until they release more DLC and expansions. And then this won't be relevant anymore of what I just said. But at this moment in time, this is 0 out of 5 passive. Then we've got Eldritch Spear. When you cast Eldritch Blast, you can ignore any cover on the targets. So it does what it says on the tin. If they're behind cover, full cover, half cover, any sort of cover, this will allow you to kind of negate that bonus they would get from having that on them. So in other words, this is a 5 out of 5. It's very strong. It means you can literally fire from anywhere you want. It's similar to Shadow Dagger. Shadow Dagger does a similar thing. If they're behind cover, it will automatically go through them anyway. And Eldritch Blast is your main attack, so it would be nice to have that on when you're in combat. Moving on to Thief of the Five Fates. So you can cast Bane once using a Warlock spell slot. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Out of all the passives here, why would I be casting Bane? You know, like Bane, I would give that spell a 3 out of 5 in general. Why would I want to use a Warlock spell slot to cast Bane when I could probably cast it anyway? And I don't know, I just don't find this very useful at all. I'd probably give this a 1 out of 5. Eldritch Sight. You can cast Detect Magic at will without expending a spell slot. So, no. As a passive, no. Definitely not. Minus 5 for this. Just because you can cast Detect Magic anyway with using scrolls, using your own spells. It doesn't really cost that much anyway. Detect Magic isn't that costly in the grand scheme of things. On top of that, Detect Magic is not very really useful at all. That spell, I'd probably give it a 2 out of 5 in these campaigns at this moment. Until they add stuff in that actually makes it a bit more useful. On to Agonizing Blast. When you cast Eldritch Blast, add your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals on the hit. So it does what it says on the tin once again. It increases your damage. This is going to be your main attack. You'll be using this throughout the whole game. Why wouldn't you want to buff it up and make it do as much damage as it possibly can? So this is probably a 10 out of 5 for me. Really, really strong or 5 out of 5, however you want to say it. This is literally a no-brainer pick. You need to take that. So strong, so powerful. Armor of Shadows. You can cast Mage Armor on yourself at will without expending a spell slot or material components. So we are using medium armor anyway because we have taken the cell sword background which means we can literally have a lot more AC on our warlock without using mage armor. So this is kind of redundant for us completely. If you're not using cell sword, you're taking another background, then yes, I can see some sort of argument taking this. But compared to some of the other options, I just don't think so. I'll give this a 0 out of 5 because we are using medium armor. If I wasn't using medium armor, I'd probably give this a 1 out of 5. Okay, so out of all our options, I've taken Agonizing Blast because it increases our damage. And as I said before, we are a ranger with spells, or should I say a ranger with 
Eldritch Blast as our arrows. And we have also taken Eldritch Spear. So this will help out quite a lot in the early game, depending which campaign you're playing. If you're playing the main campaign, you'll be facing a lot of goblins and they like to hide behind cover. So it kind of negates all the bonuses they would have, allowing you to safely fire from long range where it's safe and you don't have to move into any sort of crazy positions to try to negate the bonuses of their cover. Onto spells, let's ignore that and grab something else. We're gonna grab Hellish Rebuke. So Hellish Rebuke is actually pretty damn strong. Every time you take a range damage attack or something hits you, you have a chance or a reaction, shall I say, to attack them back. That's a hefty bunch of damage there as well. It's actually very strong, very, very solid spell for the Warlock. Level 3, more hit points, more spells, and we now have Pact Boon. At the third level, your otherworldly patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyal service. You gain one of the following features of your choice, Pact of the Tome. Pact of the Chain or Pact of the Blade. Let's start with Pact of the Tome. It gives us free cantrip spells from any spell list. There's quite a lot of good cantrips out there. And in a second as well, we're going to be taking Ritual Casting to allow us to use them to their fullest. And we've got Pact of the Blade. The Warlock becomes proficient with martial weapons and imbues weapons with the capacity to overcome resistance or immunity to damage from non-magical weapons. If you're making Eldritch Blade, you know, yes, it's fairly strong, but in this game, it's not that strong. There's, they're missing quite a lot of feats and other things to make it work so it's not very strong in this game at all it's better just be eldritch spamming the blast non-stop during combat then we've got pact of the chain it allows your warlock to bind supernatural creatures granting special features such as resistance or a bonus to saving throws for a short moment so yes, I mean, it's fairly good to keep you alive. It gives you a bit more resistance, gives you some more saving throws, but that's all it kind of does. It's just not as great as Pact of the Tome. So we're going to take Pact of the Tome for this. And next, back in the Proficiencies tab, we're going to take out Eldritch Spear. We used it for level one and level two to kind of help us a tiny bit. The beginning is one of the hardest parts of the game, so it should have helped us a tiny bit until we got a bit more spells at level three. So we'll take that out. I'm going to take Book of Ancient Secrets. Grants you the ability to acquire ritual spells from any spell list or a spell level you can cast. Immediately learn two first level rituals from any spell list, which you can only use as rituals. So we're going to take that. It's fairly strong because we're going to grab Identify. I'm going to grab Detect Magic and other things of that caliber. Okay, so over to the spells and packed cantrips. We have a lot to choose from here. Let's have a look through. So Acid Splash, 1 out of 5. Annoying B, 1 out of 5. Chill Touch, 1 out of 5. Dancing Lights, 2 out of 5. Dazzle, 0 out of 5. Eldritch Blast, 5 out of 5. Fireboat, 1 out of 5. Guidance, 4 out of 5. 5 out of 5 if you don't have a Cleric. And we've got Light, 5 out of 5. Poison Spray, 1 out of 5. Produce Flame, 1 out of 5. Ray of Frost, 1 out of 5. Resistance, 1 out of 5. Sacred Flame, 0 out of 5. Shadow Armor, 3 out of 5. Shadow Dagger, 2 out of 5. Shalag, 0 out of 5. Shine, 0 out of 5. Shocking Grasp, 3 out of 5. Spare the Dying, 4 out of 5. Sparkle, 3 out of 5 on the Lost Fade DLC. 4 out of 5 on the main campaign. True Strike, 0 out of 5. Venomous Spike, 0 out of 5. Vicious Mockery, 4 out of 5. Okay, so the ones we are going to be taking here is Vicious Mockery. Light, and we're also going to take Guidance if we don't have a Cleric. If we have a Cleric, we would take Spare the Dying. The reason we're not taking Sparkle is because we'll get that later on. At this moment in time, we cannot pick these cantrips again. It's kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So we're grabbing Vicious Mockery from the Bard. It's actually really strong this as well. If you're against something really big and bad that does a lot of damage and you want to save your tank or yourself, you can use this to give them disadvantage on the next attack throw, meaning that you might survive to live another day. Light, as I said before, I'll say it again, light is real terror. You put this in your main tank to light up the way, make sure they can hit stuff and not get any disadvantage attacks on anything. It also affects a lot of the enemies and gives and disadvantages as well then we have guidance guidance is really strong for opening up locks doing you know skill checks all that kind of thing if you don't have a cleric i would take this straight away if you do have a cleric take spare the dying instead for the utility but for the process of this guide i'm going to pretend that we don't have a cleric so we'll take guidance okay so let's ignore that and have a look at the level two spells starting with blur three out of five calm emotions four out of five Darkness, 3 out of 5. The thing about this darkness, it doesn't work like the other darknesses in other games. This one works more like a fog. So in other words, even if you have Devil's Sight, you're not going to see have True Sight and advantage attacks against them. You'll still have disadvantage attacks. So this doesn't work as well as it should on the Warlock. I think it's either currently bugged or it's intended for this game. So darkness is kind of like a bit rubbish at this moment in time. But hopefully they'll buff it. If they buff it to where it should be, it'll be a 5 out of 5 for the Warlock. Then we've got Hold Person, 3 out of 5. You've got invisibility four out of five, 
Misty Step, 5 out of 5. Ray of Enfeeblement, 2 out of 5. Shatter, 2 out of 5. Spider Climb, 3 out of 5, depending on what the other classes are on your team. So we are going to be picking Misty Step. The reasons why we're picking Misty Step is because, number one, it's a Get Out of Jail free card. Number two is a bonus action. So that means I can use this to get away or, you know, get to a height advantage. And I can rain down Eldritch Blast as well at the same time. So that means I can do both because it's a bonus action and I still have access to my cantrips. It's really, really strong. It also gives me a bit of survivability as well if I get caught my pants down. Over to Packed Rituals. So, Comprehend Languages, 0 out of 5. Detect Magic, 2 out of 5. Identify, 5 out of 5. So because these are rituals now, it doesn't cost us anything to cast. So there's no spell slot requirement. And on top of that, it doesn't cost us a pearl to cast Identify, which is amazing. That means we can identify all our items for free, which is great and cast it as a ritual. Then we've got Detect Magic. Detect Magic is kind of the lesser of the two evils. Comprehend Languages doesn't really do a lot at all in this game. So Detect Magic is slightly better. Let's finish. Up to level four. So we get hit points. We get another spell. We get another cantrip. And we get a choice between ability score increase or we get a choice between a bonus feat. So normally on nearly every other caster, I normally go for the ability score increase just because it's more worth it when they hit their spells. So say for example, on the wizard and the sorcerer, I normally always pump that into the charisma or the intellect, depending which their main stat is, to increase their damage and increase their chance to hit. But as a warlock, I'm actually going to take the bonus feat instead because as a warlock, you're not really that fussed. You're using Eldritch Blast nearly every combat. That's your main kind of source of damage, your bread and butter, so to speak. So you don't really care if it misses at all. As I said earlier as well, you're literally like a spellcaster ranger. So you're just firing arrows the whole time. So comparing Eldritch Blast versus Scorching Ray. Scorching Ray cost me a level 3 spell slot to cast. If it misses, I kind of just lose everything there. I lose the spell slot. I lose the damage. Whereas Eldritch Blast, if I miss, I'm like, okay, I'll just do it next round again. I don't lose anything. It's infinite. Over to bonus feet, so we're going to take Raise Shield. When you're about to get hit by a ranged attack while wielding a shield, you can use your reaction to get plus 3 AC until the end of the attacker's turn. You also gain proficiency with shields. So this means that we now have medium armor. We now also have a shield that we can equip at level 4, which gives us even more AC. And on top of that, every time someone tries to range attack us, which will be our main source of incoming damage, we get a chance to have a reaction against it and gain 3 plus AC to mitigate the damage completely. Really, really strong on the warlock. So we're going to take that. We're pretty happy with all our invocations at this moment in time. So we're going to ignore that and go next. Back in the spell tab once again. So we get to choose another class cantrip. We're going to take Sparkle. So Sparkle in the main campaign, I'll give it a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5. In the Lost Valley DLC, I give it a 3 out of 5. So it's not so great there. But in the main campaign, it's really good. Lots of objects light up. So it means you're not going to get any disadvantages on any of your attacks or spells, which is really good. On top of that, it's a bonus action as well. So it doesn't take away from your main action. So we're going to take Sparkle and then we're going to ignore that. And we're going to take Calm Emotion. So Calm Emotion is pretty strong. If you don't have a Bard, most of the time, though, in party compositions, you won't have a Warlock and a Bard in the same party. But this is really good. It stops anyone from being charmed or frightened. It also makes enemies indifferent to your allies unless they are wounded. So in other words, it just kind of negates out all the enemies' vicious intent towards your, your allies. And on top of that, it stops the mind control crap that normally happens. So we're going to take Calm Emotions and finish. Up to level 5, more hit points, more spells and saving throws. And we now get to unlock another class feature, Eldritch Invocation once again. Let's go next and have a look at these that we can choose from. So we're going to ignore that for now and have a look at the class Invocations. Okay, so we've got some new choices here. One with the shadows. When you're in an area of dim light or darkness, you can use your action to become invisible until you move or take an action or reaction. So it's okay. It just gives you a bit of utility. But I just don't think it's great on a Warlock. I'll give it a 2 out of 5. My the Mind. You can cast Slow once using a Warlock spell slot. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Slow is actually a pretty decent uh, spell, actually. I'll give Slow like a 4 out of 5. Uh, spell wise because it's actually really strong stops the enemies from having multiple attacks also slows down their movement tiles as well but i just think out of the, all the other choices here it's just not that great so yeah i'll give this a three out of five you got sign of ill omen you can bestow curse once using a warlock spell slot you can't do so again until you finish a long rest so bestow curse is actually a quite a good spell as well 
It means you have to go up in melee range to kind of bestow it upon them. You have to touch them. As a warlock, you don't really want to be in melee range that often, and there's better choices once again. So I'll give this a you know two out of five or three out of five. We're going to be taking repelling blast. The reason being is because now we've got a bit more spells under our belt, and on top of that, our allies will have some more things to combo with it as well. So now we get to knock them back so it means we can kite them for longer it just takes them a lot longer to get to us so if there's a melee line or a big bad boss that can be knocked back we can literally just keep knocking them back over and over again every round so it'll take them like double the time to get to us because of this also once again with ledges and cliffs and all that kind of thing and buildings you can knock them off it and do extra full damage and they go down on the ground and go prone so it's really strong we're gonna take repelling blast here and go next back in the spell tab once again we're going to unlearn the calm emotions so we can pick two level three spells so can spell five out of five dispel magic four out of five fear three out of five fly three out of five haste five out of five hypnotic pattern four out of five remove curse three out of five slow four out of five tongues zero out of five vampiric touch one out of five we're going to be taking counter spell Counter spell is really strong. If you can shut down enemy casters, like initial nuke, right at the beginning of the battle is when they kind of throw out the hardest hitting crap in the world and you literally lose half your team because of it. If you can literally counter spell at least one or two of their spells, that battle most of the time is won just because of that. Because most of the time when there's caster, there's caster there for a reason. He's there to make your life hell. So if you make his life hell, you're going to have a good day. So yeah, counter spell is really good, really strong at mitigating all that magic damage that's going to mess you guys up. Because normally as well with party, you're going to be caught your pants down and they're going to AOE and rain down fire on you. And just everyone's going to get really low, especially if they fireball you or something like that. So this stops that kind of thing and it's great. The next one we're going to take is haste. Haste is really, really good on any sort of melee martial classes. Like say for example, paladins, barbarians, rangers... Uh, hopefully I'm not missing anyone out. Warriors, I mean fighters. But yeah, literally really, really good on them. It allows them to get two more attacks. Gives them more AC as well. It just gives them everything they need. It's really good. Very, very strong on martial classes. The reason why we're taking haste now on the Timekeeper Warlock, who gets it for free at level 10 and can cast it freely with no concentration cost as well, is because that's level 10. This is level 5. So, in other words, we're going to wait another five levels to be able to haste our melee classes. Obviously, if you're running another caster that can cast haste, don't take haste. Take Dispel Magic. But if you don't have another caster and you're the only person that can cast haste, take haste now, then take it off later on when you get closer to level 10. Level 6, more hit points, more spells, and a new passive as well. So, time shift. Starting at the 6th level, when you're about to take damage, you can use your reaction to project your body forward a few seconds negating any damage and effects you are considered banished until the start of your next turn after you use this feature you can't use it again until you complete a long rest so if you get caught really badly and you don't have a messy step or something literally runs up to you out of nowhere like a really big minotaur and you know it's pretty much going to one shot you anyway if it hits you you can use this to kind of negate that completely and make yourself completely immune on top of that as well if you're surrounded by melee it happens quite a lot in the random encounters like suddenly like you'll be just kind of traveling along the road then you get a random encounter it goes start and it's oh god it's an ambush encounter and you'll literally you wind up surrounded by everything in the world you can use this to kind of negate the first attack and then banish yourself for the rest of the round obviously you lose your ability to do spells for that round but you may be able to reposition yourself a bit later on or hopefully kill a few more enemies so you can literally get into the fight again but as i said if you don't have misty step this is pretty good it's like another little misty step i would say in a way Let's go next. So another invocation. We're going to ignore that because we kind of like what we have already. Go next into the spell tab. And we're going to ignore that as well. We get to pick another spell here. So which one should we pick? So our choices are between Hypnotic Pattern, Dispel, Magic, and Fly. Fly is pretty cool because you can fly up in the air, not take any melee damage, and rain down Eldritch Blast. Dispel Magic allows you to strip the enemy's defenses if they cast any major buffs on themselves. Hypnotic Pattern is CC, so it kind of depends what you're wanting to do. So say for example you want to fly around and hit things like, you know, above cover, and just, you know, be completely immune to any sort of melee damage, apart from obviously physical attacks that are ranged, like uh, archers, that will knock you out of the air. And take fly you want to be able to cc people and you know be really annoying and kind of keep them hypnotized you know and out the fire take hypnotic pattern if you want to be able to strip defenses and have a bit more utility take dispel magic i'm gonna take dispel magic just because it has a bit more uses i would say because some of the enemies will buff up quite a bit and you need to take it down so let's go finish level seven hit points spells once again and another 
Eldritch Invocation. Let's go next. So in the Proficiencies tab, let's ignore that and let's have a look. Is there any new ones here that I haven't seen before? Um, Bewitching Whispers. You can cast Dreadful Omen once using a spell slot, but without spending material components. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. I mean, at this point in time, using one of your passives on a one-time spell is actually a pretty good spell as well. I'll give it a 4 out of 5. It's actually pretty good. But using it on a one-time spell every long rest is not the best use of your passives. So, yeah. I'll give that a 2 out of 5, 3 out of 5. And then, is there anything else here? Dreadful Word. You can cast Confusion once using... Once again, it's same as Bewitching Whispers. Confusion's okay. It's not too bad. But once again, you don't want to be casting or using your passive slot on one spell per long rest that's like one spell every three two to three battles pretty much but yeah we're going to be taking eldritch spear it's the one we took right at the beginning to help us out with the cover so now we can literally eldritch blast our hearts to light once again and on top of that you don't really need fly anymore because fly you normally be flying around the battlefield ignoring the cover hovering above them and shooting them in the back or the bum but now you can just use this and just fire from anywhere you want pretty much and it doesn't really matter so you literally you're just machine gunning eldritch blast non-stop and you don't care about cover. No Fs given. Right, so back into spells. We're going to be losing or taking away Dispel Magic. And let's have a look at these level 4 spells. So Banishment, 3 out of 5. Blight, 3 out of 5. Dimension Door, 4 out of 5. Dreadful Omen, 5 out of 5. Greater Invisibility, 4 out of 5. Phantasmal Killer, 2 out of 5. So on the whole, these spells are all pretty damn good. They're all really good spells. As I said earlier, this is actually exclusive to the Warlock. If I was playing a Sorcerer, Blight would be a 5 out of 5 or 6 out of 5 spell. But because I'm playing the Warlock, it's only a 3 out of 5. So just keep that in mind. So Dreadful Omen is one of the picks we're going to be taking. So Dreadful Omen is literally a, a mini Mind Twist. Mind Twist is probably the best spell, if not the best spell in the game. It stuns everything, it does really good damage around you, and it makes the enemies miss their turns. Also, the saving throw is intellect. This is like a mini version of it. So instead of stunning them, this literally will fear them away from you, allowing your martial classes to get attacks of opportunity on the enemies, or allowing you to get some breathing room, and it does really, really solid damage as well around you. It's not a concentration spell either, so on top of that, it's just really good. It's a very, very strong spell for the Warlock. Then we've got Greater Invisibility is the other spell we're going to take. Pretty good on rogues or squishy martial classes that you don't really want to be attacked or take any damage, and you want them to have advantage attacks on their attacks as well, like say for example a monk you put it onto. Also, on top of that, it has great utility as well. You can use this quite a lot during combat. Even cast it on yourself to stop the enemies from attacking you if you are in a really tough fight and you know the warlocks can be targeted. So yeah, great invisibility has a lot of uses. We're going to take that and then finish. Up to level 8. So we get another spell, we get some more hit points and we also get a choice between ability score or bonus feat. We'll be taking the ability score here because we want to be able to hit things and we want to be able to do more damage with our Eldritch Blast. So we're going to pump that straight into Charisma. Once again, it allows us to hit more of our spells and also allows us to do more damage in general. Let's go next. So the proficiencies, we are just going to ignore that and go next once again into the spell tab. So in the spell tab, we're going to ignore that once again and we're going to grab either Dimension Door or Blight. Dimension Door is very similar to Misty Step though. And if we take away Misty Step, we have nothing else to cast in the level 2 spell slots. So we might just take Blight instead just for the extra damage. So this is actually pretty strong. As you see, the damage is really big. The only problem with it is it's a con saving throw. So most of the enemies have really high con, really high strength. So most of the time, you're only going to get half damage. On the Sorcerer, though, you get to cast this twice using your meta magic. So it makes it a lot more kind of viable, a lot more sustainable, and a lot less RNG involved. But yeah, take it anyway, because if you can hit it, it's really good damage. Let's finish. Level 9, hit points, spells, and some creases to attack, save and throw, skill, and tool checks, and spell DC. So we also unlocked class features, Eldritch Invocation. Let's have a look. So, let's ignore that for now. I'm not going to change anything, but class invocations, let's see what we have to choose from. There's not many things to choose from now. We're taking the best of the best for this build. We're taking Repelling Blast, we've got Eldritch Spear, we've also got Agonizing Blast, which are literally the three things that we needed the most. And also Book of Ancient Secrets, which we took at the beginning to be able to identify our items. So, out of all our choices, ooh, new one here, Minions of Chaos. You can cast Conjure Elemental using a Warlock Spell Slot. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's not amazing. Once again, I'll give that like a 2 out of 5. Then we've got Otherworldly Leap over here. You can cast Jumping Yourself at will without expending a spell slot or material components. Yeah, I'll give that 1 out of 5. I can literally cast Leap for free 
almost just using my spell slots anyway. Doesn't really make much difference to me at all. I think the other new one is Ascendant Step. You can cast Levitate on yourself at will without expending a spell slot or material components. I feel like this is probably the lesser of all the evils. I don't think there's anything else that's better than this. Mainly because sometimes, you know, shit will hit the fan. You will end up losing a lot of your party members. If you can levitate into the sky and literally have no melee, be like say for example, everyone gets wiped out and it's only melee characters left. You can levitate into the sky Stay up there and just keep kind of raining down Eldritch Blast until you win that battle. You know, until if you get really stretched out thin and you're out with utility and you've lost your tank and loads of melee, yeah, you can literally win the battle just using this. Whereas, it, obviously, there's loads of ranged characters alive still, or ranged enemies alive still, you'll probably end up dying a lot quicker. But if you plan it out and take out all the ranged enemies or anyone that can throw anything at you or cast anything at you in the air, then yeah, you know, you can literally win a battle just using this. So I'm going to take Ascendant Step. And go next. Okay, back in the spell tab. We're going to ignore that and we're going to take our favorite, favorite spell and one of the best spells, if not the best spell in the game, Mind Twist. So, Mind Twist is insane. Oh, wait, I got two ahead of myself. I love Mind Twist so much. Dominic Person, three out of five. Hold Monster, three out of five. Mind Twist, 100 out of five. Raise Dead, one out of five. So, anyway, Mind Twist, as I was saying, literally crazy. Look at the damage on it. It's just, oh, Christ, it's just insane. Once you get Mind Twist, you pretty much won any campaign, pretty much. Just just using it, just use it like once, twice a battle, you know, GG, game over, Scorpion wins, fatality. Mind Twist is insane, absolutely love the spell, one of the best spells, it does insane amounts of damage around you, you can literally just go in like a, a bomber, just blow up everything, insane amounts of damage around you, and it also is an intellect saving throw, which the enemies have very low intellect all the time, and it also, when you hit it, it stuns them, incapacitates them, so they can't take an action their next turn. And it goes off a lot, actually. Like, I've used this nitty every single, you know, run I've done. And it goes off, i say, 70% of the time, 80% of the time. I'm grabbing those figures out my bum, but that is literally the percentage that I think this works. It's a so strong mind twist. I love it. Anyway, take a mind twist if you haven't guessed already. Let's finish. Level 10. More hit points. Another cantrip to select. Unlocked class features accelerate. Starting at the 10th level on your turn. You can use a bonus action to briefly accelerate an ally within six cells. They gain the effect of haste until the start of your next turn. However, they do not suffer from lethargy when Accelerate ends. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your efficiency bonus per long rest. So this means that we're getting haste for free as a bonus action. And that's not all. It doesn't cost us any sort of concentration either. So we can use haste on to a martial class so they can lay the smack down. And we can also use another concentration spell at the same time. Crazy. Let's go next. Okay, so proficiencies tab. We're going to ignore that because we like everything we have. Let's go next. We get to pick another class cantrip. So our choices are chill touch, dazzle, poison spray, shadow dagger, or true strike. Shadow dagger pretty much does what Eldritch Blast does now. But Eldritch Blast does it better because it has more damage and also knockback as well. So we're going to take Chill Touch for the utility. Chill Touch, pretty strong in some ways because it can stop things from healing up. So for example, you're facing Dryads or anything like that or anything that can heal up a lot and get regeneration abilities or heal themselves. This will stop it, negate it completely. There's quite a few encounters I can name at least, I don't know, four or five where they start healing up. It's really irritating, especially against like, you know, vampires, no spoilers included. But yeah, anything that heals up, this can stop it. Can be pretty good for utility. So we'll grab that. And then we are finally going to remove our haste because we have haste kind of baked into our class now. It's a part of the cake. So we'll take haste away because we no longer need to cast it twice. So we're going to take something else. Let's have a look. Oh, so many choices here. So many choices. I think our choice is going to be either Dispel Magic or Dimension Door. I think they are the best ones to take here. There's no point taking any more of these because Mind Twist is literally going to be used every single time when I've got a choice between any of these. So we're going to take ooh, Dispel Magic for the utility and finish. Up to level 11, more hit points and more spells. And we have now unlocked another class feature, Mystic Arcanum. Choose one spell the specified level from the Warlock spell list as the Arcanum. You can cast this Arcanum spell once without expending a spell slot. You must finish a long rest before you can do so again. Let's go next. So what that means is I can pick pretty much between four spells. I'll show you in a bit. And you can cast them for free pretty much. Let's ignore that and go next again. 
into the spells, ignore this as well. So here are our choice of four spells. We've got Circle of Death, give that a five out of five. Conjure Fae, two out of five. Eye Bite, four out of five. True Seeing, four out of five. So as you can probably tell, I'm taking Circle of Death here. Circle of Death does an insane amount of damage. As you can see there, it's, it's a big radius as well. It costs a pearl to use, but yeah, it's really strong, very powerful. The only problem is it's saving for his con, but that's the only con of the spell because it does good damage and has a big range on it as well. So we'll take Circle of Death. And then for our spell, we're going to be taking either between Fly or Hypnotic Pattern. I'm going to take Fly just because uh, it's pretty cool to be able to fly up in the air and, you know, rain down like massive Eldritch Blasts. So we'll take that and finish up to level 12, our final level for the Warlock. So our choice here is between Ability Score Increase or Bonus Feat. So we'll take the ability score increase to raise our charisma up to 20, the max it can go, allowing us to hit most things and giving us the most damage we can get as well on the Warlock and on our Eldritch Blast. And then we get to choose another class invocation. We're going to ignore that. Let's have a quick look through, see what is the lesser of the evils. I'm guessing it's going to be Devil's Sight. You have blind sight up to 16 cells, allowing you to perceive enemies even through invisibility and magical darkness. So it literally does what it says on the tin. It's pretty decent in some ways. You know, it's a bit niche, but it's better than anything else we can choose here. So we'll take Devil's Sight and go next. So our final look through the spell book. There's not many things I want to unlearn here. I mean, I could switch out Misty Step for Dimension Door, but I kind of like Misty Step because it's a bonus action and, Mist and Dimension Door is not. So, well, yeah, I kind of prefer the bonus action rather than a main action. Um, let me have a look. What else is there? This is pretty good because we've got Mind Twist there. We don't need anything from that. Uh, Banishment is useful in some campaigns for the Elementals. Um, Haste, we don't need that anymore because we're level 10. Uh, Fear and Hypnotic Patterns are okay as well, but that's another Concentration spell, which we'll most likely be using on the fly or on the Greater Invisibility, probably. And then... Don't see anything else of relevance here. There's darkness now as well. We've got Devil's Sight. But unfortunately, Devil's Sight doesn't interact how it should with darkness. Um, so in other words, we don't actually have advanced attacks on the creatures inside the darkness. It works more like fog, as I said earlier. So if they fix that, then yeah, darkness would have been taken a lot sooner. And Devil's Sight would have been taken a lot sooner as well. But until they fix it, or maybe it's intended for now, darkness and Devil's Sight is not working as intended as it normally does. So yeah, I think we're pretty much done with the spell. Let's we'll ignore the... We're going to not change anything there. I'm going to finish. Right, so that about wraps up my Warlock class guide. If you've got any suggestions or any class guides you want me to do, please let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.